Hello everybody, welcome to the next video in my Photo Basics series where we're looking at film loading. In this episode we're going to be looking at loading 120 film, medium format film. Uh, we're going to be using our Veronica medium format camera. Uh, we have a whole host of medium format cameras available to you at the college. This is the most popular one when you're working out on location or working in the studio to take some really, really high quality negatives. And so we're going to get straight to it and we're going to look at how we load the film into this camera to be able to take some shots. Okay, so we're going to load our medium format film into the camera. And the first thing we've got to do to get our film into the camera is on the back part of the camera there are two little white arrows pointing inwards and we're going to squeeze those together just to open up the back bit of the camera to take out the film holding part of the camera itself. And the film that we're going to load into our camera is going to be some Ilford HP5 Plus film. So, what we're going to do open up that film and we have a whole range of different medium format films, different ISO ratings available at the college. Uh, when you get it, it will come in a box and inside that box there will be a little foil uh, packet and once you open the foil packet, take out the film and it will say that it's unexposed film and then we are going to peel off the first little white sticky part to see to reveal where it says unexposed on it and then we're just gonna give it a little pull make sure it doesn't come loose and get out the film paper tab that we're going to load into our camera so looking at our film cassette you've kind of got to with this one remember that you'll already have one of these film take up spirals in the camera already. Now looking at the film camera, on our camera as you'll see it says Zenza Bronica at the bottom. That is the bottom part where the film is going to feed onto. So we want to make sure that this empty uh, film take up is positioned to cover that. So you open it up, put it onto the little slot and then close it down so that locks that in place. Um, sometimes if you rent out one of these cameras, you might find that, that that one is left on the top if someone's just taken out the film. As good practice, it's always good that once you finish shooting the film, you make sure that you put the empty spiral from where your film was when you put it in. You put it back in at the bottom so it's ready to go for the next person. To load the film, we're going to push on the little sticking out tab at the top to open the side lock for the film. Take our film and the white paper where it says unexposed, we want to put that so it's facing down as though it's towards the camera so we can see the black part. And that we're going to load on to the film take up spiral, lock it in place and take this film leader, stretch it out over the front of the film chamber, pull a little bit out so it goes over there and then similar to what we've done with our 35mm cameras we have a tiny little plastic slot that runs through the spiral and then we're going to tuck that film leader in just to over there. Once our film is loaded into the cassette chamber the tag is nicely secured in there you'll see that we have a film advance dial which is showing us which way around to, to wind the film and if you look straight down the length of the film you'll see just on the metal markings there is a little orange arrow and what we're going to do is wind on this paper just to get a good lock of the paper around the film holder and then a black paper line is going to a black line is going to appear on the paper with an arrow and you want the two arrows, the arrow on the film, to be lined up with the arrow that is on the piece of metal, which is the marking to give you the right registration for your film. 
So we take our little film wind and we're going to start winding it around. Check that the film just threads nicely on it, which it is. And then we're going to wind our film dial until we see, there it is, our little black arrow. So that line there is pointing perfectly at the orange wind on, so we know that it's lined up ready to go. So once you've done that, you're now ready to put your film back into your camera. So the loaded film is going to go at the top. Now push that in, it lines up nicely together and it will lock in place and your film is in the camera ready to start shooting. Once the film's loaded in to the camera, we've got to go through our camera settings to check that we're ready to shoot. So at the moment, we've got, a, we've got our ISO on our camera set to 100. HP 5 film is 400 ISO, so we're going to change that. And how we do that is just lift it up slightly, this little dial, and turn the dial so the 400 is in line with the white notch. So that's our ISO setting. Shutter speed and the time comes to change those are used on the little dial at the side here and you adjust that to the shutter speed. Your aperture setting is at the front of the camera lens. So holding on to this ridge part for your fingers you can turn and change the aperture settings and we'll talk to how to actually know what aperture and shutter to put into your camera in a little bit. But, so that's the basic settings of it. We've got to now wind our film on. So what we're going to do is firstly, take out the metal dark slide in the side of the camera. Otherwise your camera won't shoot with that still in. So pull that out, place it down. And at the moment, we're going to wind our film on. So we're going to shoot and wind it on. And our frame counter, which is just down here, is going to get to zero. Okay, so uh, currently our shutter is on the start. We need to get it to the zero, and how we do that is by just firing and winding on. So, taking the winding crank, we're gonna keep winding the crank, and the joy of these cameras is you can keep winding it, and that's loading the film from the paper, and once you've hit where the film's ready to start, the camera will lock, and that means that you're next, you're ready to start taking the shot and capturing your images. So I'm just going to place that back down. I'm not quite ready to go out and shoot with this one yet. So I'm going to take the dark slide and load that back in. And there is a little marking on the top of the camera just up here, a little white dot. And there's a little white dot on top of the dark slide so you know which way around to put that in. Locks in place and it's done. So our camera has got the ISO setting right. We've wound it on so it's ready to shoot. What's interesting about the medium format cameras that we have here at the college, the Bronica ones particularly, is they're what we call a modular system. So you can take apart bits of the camera, you can obviously change the lenses, you can change the viewfinders. You can open and close that so you know, this is a waist level viewfinder, but you can get uh, pentaprism viewfinders. Um, what is good about this one is, at the moment we've got 400 ISO film in there, and you may want to set some different ISO range. So you might want to have 100 ISO film, 3200 ISO film, depending on the different situations you've got. And you may not finish the roll of film that's in there. So what we can do while this dark slides in is with these cameras, little black button down there, we can push that and the film back comes off the camera. So our film is perfectly safe in here behind this piece of metal. Um, what is good for you to do as you take these cameras out and you might have different ones is in this part here take your old film packet rip off the square tabs it tells you the film Ilford HP 5 plus and that can slide just into the back bit of the camera there so you know that if you change the different um, backs and put different film in you'll know which film is preloaded in there and that can go in your bag and you can take out another one to put it back in, I'm just going to line up the catch, put it in, click it, and it's completely and utterly locked in place. Now this camera would be ready to go out and do our shoot with. OK, 
Okay, so in the camera we've set the ISO. What we need to know when we go out and shoot is what aperture and shutter speed that we need to use. And how we use that with one of these cameras, because they don't have a built-in light meter, is by using one of these light meters. Um, this one here is a Sekonic light meter, and we have lots of these available at the college for you to use for all the different sorts of film cameras, um, as well as in the studio for, to get your lighting correct. And they're pretty straightforward to use. They've only got a couple of buttons. What we need for this shoot is we're going to turn the power on. And then you have a couple of modes. So the first mode, which is just like a little lightning bolt, that is for if you're looking for a flash. So if you're doing it in the studio, you press it again. There's a lightning bolt with a little C. That's for a corded flash. That's where if you were shooting this camera in the studio, you'd have a cable that runs from the camera into your key light. And the cable from the key light when you're working out your light settings will come. You take it out of the camera, you plug it into this little PC port here, and then you could press this button on the side, which it takes the reading, it will fire the flash, and then it will tell you the aperture that you need for your camera once you've set the shutter speed. Because we're going to do an outside shoot, most people take these out and are going to do them on location. We want to take an ambient light reading. So we're going to press mode once more, and then you'll get one ambient mode, for, which is an exposure value. Press it again, you've still got the picture of the sun, but this time you have an f-stop and a t, which means time value. Now, how that will work when we come to take the shot is it will give us our reading. We pick what shutter speed we want to use and it will tell us the aperture to set. So we've done the power, we've selected our mode. Just press the button that says ISO to check that we're on the right ISO. It says 400 at the moment, but you use these up and down arrows to change. So if you press down, it goes down the ISO settings. If you hold the ISO button and press up, it goes up the ISO settings. So 400 is perfect. So what we're going to do now is when you go out to shoot, we're going to take the light meter, point the lumosphere towards the camera from the subject that you're going to shoot. And when you want to take a reading, you press the big expose button. It takes the reading. This lumosphere here reads the light in the scene and it will tell you the settings. To take our reading, what we've got to do is think of the shutter speed that we want to use just to put in at the beginning. I'm going to be doing a shoot on location. It's quite nice brightness outside today, so I'm going to just use these up and down arrows. And when you change them on their own, that just changes the time value. So I want to pick a shutter speed of about 125th of a second. Nice and fast, catch me some movement and get me nice still shots. To work out what um, aperture setting to put into the camera for this time value in the room I'm in currently, you're then going to press this big button to take the reading. So pointing it towards where I'm shooting, press the big button, takes a reading and it tells me to photograph in here and get my images exposed correctly with a shutter speed of 125th of a second, I need an aperture of f5.6. With that aperture of f5.6, I could set my camera up now and create perfectly exposed photographs in my current lighting situations but it may be that we're more concerned about the depth of field let's say we're taking a portrait outside we want a nice shallow depth of field so f5.6 that would give me a relatively shallow depth of field but if i'm an even shallower one my camera lens goes down to f2.8 so for example if i just use these up and down arrows without pressing the expose button it works out for me that if i wanted to use f2.8 I'd set my shutter to 500th of a second. So then to get that shallow depth of field, I could, my lens could be on f2.8, my shutter speed could get up to 500th of a second, my ISO is predetermined by the film, 400, and that will be the settings to set into this camera when I wanna do my photo shoot. So if I just go back down to f5.6, 125th, we'll set the camera and then we're good to shoot. So looking at camera settings, 400 ISO is already set to the camera because that's the film that's in with a HP5. Shutter speed, we're going to set it to 125th of a second. So using this dial, I'm going to turn it to 125th of a second. So ISO and shutter speed are correct for our current settings according to the light meter. Okay, so the last part of the exposure triangle we need to set is the camera's aperture. And our light reading told us that we need f5.6 for our current lighting conditions. And at the moment it's currently set to f5.6 but if you want to change it 
you can turn the aperture blade and you'll see it changes the settings. The white marker lets you know which one you're currently set on. As you turn it, you can hear it clicking as it changes between aperture values. F5.6 is what we wanted, which is the last of our camera settings that we need to put in. So we currently have our ISO set to 400, our shutter speed set to 125th of a second, and our aperture set to f5.6, which is exactly what our light meter told us to do for taking photographs in this current lighting situation. So we're ready to go off and do our shoot. So once you're ready to do the shoot, we're gonna take out our dark slide so the film is ready to be exposed. Open your viewfinder, and there's some lovely looking vintage wallpaper on the wall there. So we're gonna just use the focus dial make sure your subject is in focus and when you're ready to shoot you fire the button and then wind it and you wind it twice and it will click and it locks so that's our first frame taken and we're ready to take the next one so once you've finished your shoot and you're ready to get the film out here you've done all the shots I'm just going to keep winding it on and it will just almost like keep winding on forever and ever and ever. That means your film's fed from one side to the other and it's ready to come out. So I'll take my dark slide and I'll put that back in place. White mark to white mark. That's gone in there. Okay, so to get the film out, we're going to push the two markers that we pushed together at the very beginning to put the film in. Pop that. Open the back to take the cassette chamber out. And now you'll see that the film that we put in at the top has gone all the way around onto the bottom spiral. So we're going to take that out by pushing it just slightly towards the left. So that opens up and we can take the film out. And we'll see now, we can see the bit of tape that says exposed to let us know we've shot that film. Take the film leader, give it a tug that's nice and tight. Tuck it inside and fasten it around. Now on the back here, there is some like a, an adhesive, which we're gonna lick the back like you would with a postage stamp and then pull it tightly around the back to seal it in. Okay, so once you have the glue strip wet, you can pull it, get it all down, make sure it's nice and tight in there. You really don't want any light getting into the film. So that's sealed up. We can see where it says exposed. So that one is ready to take away and process it in the processing rooms. One last final piece of good practice, like what we talked about at the very beginning, is now, next time someone uses this camera, they're gonna to wanna to put their film in there from where I started. So we're just gonna take the back spiral out, put it into the bottom, and lock it up. Close the top one, and then you're ready to put the film chamber back in, close it, get rid of all the bits that we did, and that is already done to pack away because we're finished. Okay, so that was loading medium format film into one of the medium format cameras. I hope that helped and acted as a nice little overview for showing you how to put the film in, carry out your shoots and then take the film out so it's ready to be processed and in future videos we'll look at how to process the different formats of film that we've been looking at in this series of videos. Um, the more you go up the film formats the much more of a treat you're in for when you go from 35mm to medium format and then to large format the quality of your negatives jumps up so much and it really does take your analogue photography to the next level. And I will see you next time when we look at another film format. Until then, happy shooting, enjoy the world of film, and enjoy one of the greatest sounds in analogue photography. That is how you take a photograph.